Gabriel's on this Feast of the Annunciation. Thanks to the coronavirus, in the whole long history of this church building, this is the first time that you, the faithful, have not gathered here in church on the Feast of the Annunciation to sing God's praises and to celebrate Mass together. Because we can't be together, we want to encourage you to offer your Annunciation prayers at home and also to join with us in looking afresh at the great Annunciation painting which hangs in this Lady Chapel here in our church. It depicts the Annunciation story, which is surely the most famous of all the Bible stories to feature our patron saint the great Archangel Gabriel. Our Annunciation was painted by John Pelling. You might like to look him up on Wikipedia as he's a fascinating character. Born and raised in Brighton and Hove, he is a priest as well as an artist. Pelling is particularly known for abstract religious imagery painted in lots of bright, vibrant colours on large canvases. Well, our Annunciation certainly meets the large canvas mark, but unlike the normal range of bright colours, our Annunciation is painted almost entirely in shades of blue, punctuated with white and green. Here Pelling is picking up on the traditional colour of Mary, associated with her since the 6th century, or possibly even slightly earlier. Blue was the colour of empresses of that era, and an unusual colour for the common man or woman, as the blue pigment was difficult to obtain. And so it became associated with Mary, the great mother of God. Here, in our painting, we see hundreds of different shades of the colour blue. It seems that in our depiction, Mary has been busy with her washing, and there is a look of extraordinary surprise on her face and in her mannerisms and actions as the Archangel Gabriel appears to her with the message that she is to be the mother of Jesus the Son of God. Also depicted here is some classic Marian imagery, the moon and lilies in the archangel's hand. Just as Mary reflects graces from God upon the church, so the moon reflects the light of the sun upon the earth. The lily is a symbol of purity, and virginity, and so it symbolises the Blessed Virgin Mary, whose virginity was left intact when the Holy Spirit came upon her and she conceived and bore in her womb our Saviour, Jesus Christ. As Gabriel delivers his message to Mary, we see shafts of light radiating from behind him. The source of this light is not the moon, the lines simply don't carry to that point on the canvas. But rather, this is the divine light of God and symbolises that Gabriel's message to Mary was not his own, but that he acted as a messenger for God himself. When God calls us, we must respond. And the wonder of this Annunciation story for Christians is that Mary, the young girl at the centre of the story, told by the angel that her life was to be turned on its head, that nothing for her would ever be the same again, responded to God's call by saying yes. So, as we reflect on this Annunciation story today, we're reminded that we must be attentive, listening for God's call to us, and also that, like Mary, we must be ready to respond with a yes, a simple yes. It's not just that we are not to respond with a no, but also 
that we cannot, as Christians, respond with a maybe. We cannot respond with a later. We cannot respond with a let me think about it. Like Mary, our response to God's call to us must simply be yes. Let it be to me according to your will. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed and wondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has conceived also bear a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel. 